Right, so another topic, and this is one from Wicked's Twitter, actually, but it's more of like an abstract one. So I wanted to get her thoughts on this because it's actually something, in my opinion, that wasn't discussed very often in an esports context. It's it's about the concept of mobility creep. So if people don't know, that term itself, actually, as far as I know, comes from like collectible, collectible trading card games like Magic the Gathering, right? Because obviously you have like damage creep or whatever. And the, the premise is once one factor in the game becomes overtuned, like it's too powerful, there tends to be a thing called creep where just gradually over time it gets more and more and more and more and more out of control so an example in this case would be this is a very abstract example Wicked Commit is only a specific one obviously in a second right if you think about I'm thinking myself about three or four years ago in League was when every fucking new champion had like multiple dashes on the champion and as a result all fucking mid lane and top lane like pretty sweet I, I was a bot lane player like the whole time I played League it became a nightmare to play the game because a team fight wasn't like Peel for this guy. Watch this. It was like a million people flying in and out of fights, like a Zoe coming in as a Nakali comes through, and a fucking hit. It's like, give me a break, mate. Like, how many escapes do they have? Like, how am I supposed to hit anyone with the CC? So, in this case, Wicked, what was it that spurred this thought at the moment? Was it something recent they've changed about the game? So, the mobility creep tweet that I made was basically about Riot saying it themselves because they want movement speed to be less. They have too much, uh, not movement speed, but like jumps, right? I think right. they are thinking about nerfing Stridebreaker and Gale Force, but I don't know. But that's the obvious choices. Maybe Prolos Claw. Yes. But I think Mobility Creep is something you can add to a lot of concepts in League of Legends. And it also removes strategic depth, I think. For example, you talked yeah. about the mobility the champions have. I feel like right now, when you split push in competitive and solo queue, it's very hard to go split push for second towers because everyone have almost infinite healing. And it's really easy for the enemy team to just run up to you extremely fast with the jumping plans, with the speed ups potentially, and go behind you. So often what people do is they just push the wave in and go to jungle camps or back off. So as in they don't even try now to sort yeah, of yeah. get the feel for you come in, can I just get, they just say like, just don't even bother doing the calculation. Like they, they don't even try and go for the towers because it's just not worth the risk in a lot of situations. Yeah, no, no, I, I can see that. Like, yeah, I mean, I get I, what I've seen. What I've seen all the years now, like especially like this season, I guess is that like the strategic depth is more or less basically limited to do we fight or not. Like that's kind yes. of what it is. It's yeah. like do we want to fight? No. Okay, so we back off. Like, and I, I think the nuance of League of Legends to a certain extent. While I do think that it's become more, how do I put this? Like, it's become a bit more di difficult, abstract to understand. Like, what you have to do at certain moments. Like, I still think that it's the strategic value of like. Um, certain things has been lost, and I think that's like where I agree with you. I guess where, um, I mean, for one, one through one, one through one doesn't even exist anymore. Right now, one through one does not, does not yeah. really exist. Like you only have one four, so you already have like half of the game of mid to late game strategies out of the window. Overloading on one side, which would be a three two situation, like you don't really have in the game game anymore. So you basically, only have shifts or one fours. Like that's basically only all you have. So why why would you want to have that? Like have that be. The, the the game when you had it so strategically diverse before why would you want that and the only thing that if i think about it, the more i see it, like the game it becomes a lot more call of duty like you know like you have a, mm -hmm. a, a you respawn you go back to fighting you die you're like oh nick gotta try again and like oh 40 seconds all right next fight you know like it's like it's like it keeps get, like yes. skill checking as a team to a certain extent not individually but as a team and whoever wins out wins out while it may not be the same thing at a pro level, like a pro level it's still slightly more diverse, but that's definitely my experience in solo key where people don't think about this anymore, they just do the same thing all over again and they keep checking until they win. But, but I think that's mainly because of the meta, right? Like if you remember the past, you also had poke comms that were dedicated yeah. to just poking people out. You have healing comms, you had kite comms, you had a lot of different comms, then you had split push comms as well. But a lot of those don't work anymore because everyone does the same thing to a, a certain extent, right? Every single comp you pick right now is a team fight comp. If you can't team fight, it doesn't matter. And every single comp can 100 to zero another champion. Where in the past, you had champs that actually relied on slowly choking people down. Yeah, and we, we also don't have the strategic diversity in the early game, for example, to kind of back that up, right? Because we had this kind of same meta, like if you remember, like back in Season 4, we still had like slightly more diversity in how the camp comps worked, but you inherently still had teamfight comps a lot, like across the board. But you had like early game interactions, right? Yeah, like for example, like a team being really proficient at, at fist, what example, for fist chase matchup for whatever it is, right? Gang Milan level three, level four, try to get that ahead. And suddenly that, that, the team fight comp just outmatched the other team fight comp because it's got so marginally ahead, right? That doesn't quite happen anymore. People are just trading resources right now and they're like, you get this, I get this, all right, 
one spike, I'm gonna try something. Next spike, you have a spike, I'm gonna leave it at that. And then next spike, I'm gonna do something again. But it's not about individual outplay anymore in that kind of sense. It's not like I could do something at that very moment and just make a difference. You would still go on a team fight at the end anyway. So it doesn't really matter if I'm 1K ahead, 2K ahead. It helps a bit, but it doesn't really make the, the amount of difference that you, you wanna see to a certain extent. Oh, also, I think when you're talking about early game, it's not worth it in most cases to try and go for outplays because it's so dangerous to go for those outplays due to how strong support and jungle is on the map and due to how little advantage you actually get if you manage to kill the opponent. For example, if you kill the enemy top laner nowadays, oh, he died, he TP's back. He barely yeah. loses anything. He, he doesn't even care that much. Like, oh, he got 300 gold on a yes. roll that's not very impactful, right? Where if you die, however, the jungler gets further ahead, the jungler is super happy, he soaks up some XP top as well, and now he's going to snowball super hard. So dying is more dangerous than getting the kill. Yeah, to a certain extent, I, I agree with that. It's like, I mean, I still think there's early game interaction, so don't get me wrong, and I don't want anyone to quote me and be like, amazing things, there's no early game interaction anymore. So he's actually going against his word. I still think there's early game interaction, there's, but the, the nuance is different to what, what it used to be. It used to be about like, I'm going to outplay you, we're going to do something. But now it's like, um, it's 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 slightly like it, timed differently, and what I mean by that is like you have these specific timers where jungle differences exist, right? Clear speed difference exists, for example. Suddenly, you have like twenty seconds more than the enemy has, for example, to get a crab or to make to walk behind someone. So you still have that, but it's not like it's not an individual skill checking to that extent. It's more or less do I have like in that very moment slightly more clear speed than you? So the 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 change has been made to. Basically, I get resources faster than you, so I have more time to make a play. Like, that's basically what it is at this point in time, I feel. I mean, I can even give a very, very good example for this. So if you take a Messiah, there was a play where Fox uh, outplayed uh, Khan, and he solo killed him. It was Lee Sin versus Gangplank, I believe, or something like that. Uh, Lee Sin versus Jay, something, whatever. Bot lane. And this happened, and Fox was, I think, 50% health after the play. It wasn't even close, right? He just walked up to him and killed him straight up. Back in the day, you had plays where Faker was super close to dying, made crazy outplays, flashes, dodging things, and that was praise, you know. I feel like outplays just don't happen to the same level, so even outplays that are very, very, like, not that cool or not that impressive get praised really hard nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's, it feels like that the outplays that are happening are more or less, like, due to intrinsic game mechanics you can't change mm -hmm. anything about, right? Like, it's not like something, yeah. like, for example, like, the Udia pathing, like, okay, I get, like, more more creeps fast creeps on you then I go my CDR boots and then I'm gonna be that mobility creep to a certain extent that it's gonna run around and slap everyone in the face, right? Like you don't have the Lisa and Jarvan Kazix like I mean Jarvan EQ flash in order to dodge a spell, that kind of stuff in order to make an outplay, mm -hmm. right? Like the the outplays have been like I don't wanna say cerebralized, but it's more or less like intensified to the game. And I think that's a it's really different to what it used to be. It could be due to player quality too. But I don't think, I think it's mainly because Riot has just overdone certain things. So the game has become both balanced and really unbalanced in some regions, but really unbalanced in other regions. I don't think it's about player skill. Uh, a lot of people bring that all the time. But even if you look at LEC teams or NA teams, LCS teams or whatever, when the best teams are playing against the worst teams, you don't see absolutely crazy outplays either, right? Yeah. And there's big differences in the skill level between some of the players. And you also see players that you don't consider that great mechanically come in and do completely fine because it's not as important to be mechanically gifted anymore. Yeah, put it this way. Whenever I watched this recent MSI, and obviously, like, RNG had some games where they could have even lost to some of the nobody teams. Uh, obviously, fucking uh, Dam One literally did. Like, they were in position where they almost lost to the Japanese team. Like, they were right in position to lose one of those games against Cloud9. They obviously could have lost both times to the Japanese team. Like, on paper, if you went back in time to, like, Season 5... A Korean team wouldn't just win that game. They would monster stomp every single player in the server. Like, they would go for the most ridiculous skill check out play. Like, they would try and one, like, every solo player would try and solo kill the other guy. Like, that just doesn't happen now. Like, it's a bit like what happens in every game. Like, in my native game of Counter Strike, it's not that, like, raw skill of the average player to the best player in the world is, like, massively reduced gap. It's more that people have played the game for so long that basic things are mostly understood. So it's like even the average player knows how to. To look like he yeah. can do like 75% of what the best player can do. It's not that he can do it mechanically, but you know, he knows like sort of like how things with the flow chart of how the game will go. Everyone understands that basically. Whereas there was way more room for that in the past. The area I, as like a boomer in league, get a bit tilted by the current meta is even though everything now is skirmishing and team fighting, I actually find some of the team fighting less fun to watch as an observer because one of the factors I used to really like about like the middle period of league, like season four to season seven 
seven say was that when you had a team fight i could have like paused the game and i could say to someone i was watching it with like right here's what we're going to look for like let's look how this tank like zones at this point and then oh let's see can this burst mage get in and actually do the damage before they kill him because these two players are going to try and cc him when he comes in right you could sort of know as a player the rough like flow chart like here's what we need to do in this team fight to win here's what we've got to avoid right People can say that I'm just complaining now. I don't think that's actually possible except for the absolute best teams right now. Like when I watch a lot of teams team fight, and I'm talking about like top teams in like Western regions, sometimes the team fight looks like the, even the players involved, it's, they're just reacting. Like they, yeah, they, they can't they can't possibly have a flow chart what's going to happen. Like even back in the day, right, I used to joke because it's true. You know when Jack way back in the day, like maybe four or five years ago, made that series where he used to break down team fights. And he used to do a great job of it, by the way. You know, he'd have all the graphics showing you what, what ability they mm. used but even for those team fights I used to say as fun as it is to watch the players definitely aren't thinking what he's thinking because he's pausing the fucking game and going frame by frame you know like he's pausing it like right they he, like he making them all like John Wick like right he calculated the guy behind him was kicking and he like it's like no they just did all that off instinct it's just that the game was a little bit more like on the rails back then what do you think on this topic like, is that a boomer take or do you find similar for team fights because I feel like they're super chaotic and in my opinion I don't really believe that like RNG knows what they're doing I think they just go with it man I think they just didn't embrace the chaos as it were you know I mean, one really sick example of this is if you look at MSI again, right? Look at a lot of the Uda players. A lot of the Uda players were thinking, yo, I'm going to walk in, I'm going to slap somebody, stun them, and then I'm going to start a fight. And then what happened? They blew, they blew up instantly. They just died. They just instantly died in a lot of the team fights, and nothing happened off it. I think the problem right now is there's so much damage that it's very difficult for a lot of champs to even start team fights. So you can't just waiting around, fighting somebody to mess up, or for you to just outstat check them. Yeah, it's too much vision too at the, at the same time. Like you have so much information in the map, on the map right now. I think Blue Trinket, obviously, then you have like the uh, the water item by the support. Then you have all the trinkets too. Like it's, it's the, the, the game right now is like because both parties have so much knowledge about the basics, I guess. You know, like I, I consider vision a basic at this point, I suppose, because everyone can just put it up. It's that like because of that, like the, the higher value actually gets lost. And when I, uh, what I mean by that, because everyone is already at this elevated level of basics, like this outplay potential is not there anymore. Like you don't quite have the main, like the, the mass amount of difference. So it's more about, hey, I'm going to do something, going to try. And I'm, in more cases than not, I'm going to be right because I am the better player. That's more like it than it is mm -hmm. like, I'm going to make an outplay because I'm 100% sure I'm better than you. Like that's that's a bit different than, than it used to be. Like I remember in season, season two to seven, even like where if you're the better player, you couldn't make an outplay because you just had more more knowledge about the game, but you also had more mechanics. You had both combined. Right now, I think mm -hmm. both are kind of haunted, but I think especially the knowledge part has kind of been equalized across the board to a certain extent, where the top players still have a bit more, but it's not it's not the same di same difference as it used to be. And that's what Thorin just said. Like the, the basics of League of Legends right now, even vision, even rotations to a certain extent, are kind of well understood by the public, right? And if they are well understood by the public, that means even the bottom tier teams kind of know the same things that the yes. top tier teams do, but they just evolve slightly slower. Well, but I also think, right, streamlined the game on made it easier, right? Like nowadays, yes. you don't you don't have to make decisions if you're going to buy wards. You have blue trinkets, so you can just get vision True. if you need to see Baron or you need to see dragons. If you need to go into a place and you don't have any vision, you just blue trinket and then you walk in or you push mid and then you walk in afterwards once they have to respond, right? The problem is, I think having the decision to buy Vision was really important and I actually think it's much better than the current system. The only yeah. problem was that the support was just ending up having to buy all the wards, right? But that could have been solved in different ways. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I think that I think that Vision, vision may actually be the most important thing because because of like the, the information gathering that you, you sustain right now, right? There's no way on the map that you don't have vision right now. Like if you want to, you can have a stalemate for 50 minutes. Like if you just don't want to engage, you just play slowly. It's true, you have game ending scenarios, right? You have the Elder Dragon and the second Elder Dragon, but, and the Dragon Soul, I guess. So you have three ending ending scenarios, but it's like, Nesha is not an ending scenario, like in, anymore. Um, even like, even even just finding like the right fights is not necessarily an ending scenario anymore if people take it on the right time. So it's like, you have these def definite right implemented ending scenarios and those are the only things people play for nowadays. And if it's like, if it's, that feels wrong. I think the decision making between getting get, get vision and not having vision is maybe a way to kind of rebalance the game because you put this in monetary resource, right? Like yes. if I wonder, if my economy is good, like I can buy more wards or if I, if I think my economy is good enough in the next couple of minutes, I will buy more wards, get more vision and we're going to utilize that in order to increase my economy. And if I'm wrong about it, I pay a heavy, heavy price, right? So, or even like, if you're behind, you know, investing in going for wards in that scenario, like you might be able to make a play to get back in the game or you might look like a dickhead because you do nothing. Yeah. It's yeah, a strategic I'm, choice, right? 
uh, blue, blue trinkets are the worst implementation ever. It just doesn't make sense. And also, like that, you know when dragon is dying, and you know when Nash yes. is dying. Why do you yes. know this? Why why do I know this? I don't want to know this. If that makes sense, you know, it's like it's like back in the days. It was remember like for example season four or something like that. You're you played against some Korean team. It's like level two or three. Your jungler goes by the dragon. The dragon is suddenly gone. You're like, what the fuck happened? Yes. You know? Like you're like, okay, so it, he should have died in the last thirty seconds to one minute. I think so. I'm gonna try to time the next team fight, right? And yeah. if you're wrong about the timer, suddenly lose another dragon. It's like, Jesus, you know, like, okay, so what do you have to do in set, right? What, what was the conclusion? Okay, I have to get more vision at certain times, or I have to make more plays in order for me to get prios in order to get vision. So you actually had an incentive to kind of replace the lack of knowledge with knowledge, right? Like nowadays, everything is so foretold. It's like, I mean, I mean you seen the, uh, the red buff and blue buff, right? Oh, it's yeah, kind of information thing. as well. On camps too, right? Yes, like you, have, you, have, you have time on like all of this is so, so pre-told. Like people, I, even last year I said the same thing. People like kind of kind of were like against it, whatever it is. But it's like make the game less dumb. And I think we see a lot more cerebral aspects to the game. Kind of kind of like become more part of the game again. Like especially the timers that don't make sense and less ward coverage or at least like no blue trinkets because blue trinkets. What they tell me is like. Oh, I have a free Ash Arrow every what is it, ninety seconds, whatever it is. You know, you can have two people yeah. like, probably every forty-five seconds on average, right? So it's like, do you really want that in the game? Like, why don't we have this this kind of like dance, whatever it's like, and like the 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 fun aspect of League of Legends? You know, and, like, the sad part is it's actually something we've seen in other sports too. That sports have become dumb in that sense. You know, like, yes. and I don't know if this is like a general thing that people are just like being spoon-fed, like. Idiots are like, here, just take this. You know, it's like in in the NBA we have the same thing. Actually, the game actually has become dumber because like you have like the the. Uh, I mean, this is like again like a weird example, but it's like the shot clock now is like forty seconds. That's one thing. So it ups the pace, obviously. So you have more more opportunities to make plays. But it's also like that due to analytics and everything like that. Like you, you have just more, way more, way more threes and way way less skill expression at the very sense because like people are just. Choosing from one or two, one one of two shots, it's like threes or layups. So yeah. you have like no in between anymore. So it's like the same thing kind of applies in the You have all of this either you go all in or you do nothing. If that makes sense, you know, like you have like and there's no in between. It's not like I do something and I do a bit there, but it's more like I go all in or do nothing. And I think that's that's a weird concept. I also think the scrying up, but like I'm not sure if it calls scrying up. You know the vision one, you can click on the plant, the vision plant. Yeah. I think it one's terrible because everybody know. you walk past it, you click on it, you're like. Oh, there's a wall. Great, I'm going to clean it. Oh, there's no wall. Well, I'm not going to clean it. Like, it's so simple. You don't even think about it very much. Because if you leave it open, most of the time, the enemy team is going to take it. So you have to click yes. it. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. There's all... I mean, when I heard the discussions about, like, this, the scrying orb, and I heard the discussions about, like, the, the jump plans you know, in Season 5, it was like, because I was, I was playtesting in Season 4 at the end of it, and... Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to some of the game developers at the time, and they were talking about jump plans. It's going to be a fun mechanic to add to the jungle. But what it did, for example, is like it it killed the difference between generalists that had dashes and generalists that didn't have dashes. Yes. To a certain extent, that made sense. But it also made a lot of champions that would not, for example, right now be in the meta if there were there th that wasn't the case, right? Like, or a lot of champions would have less opportunity to be in the meta. So it's like it's 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 like give and take to a certain extent, but it kind of killed the difference between certain champions and other champions, and that's what I don't like. Again, you know, like, you talked about this with Udia to a certain example. Example, like, Udia is, Udia, like, Udia wouldn't be dominant, or that dominant, if he could could not, for example, basically go over wards whenever the fuck he wanted to, right? Like, he has no downsides, in, a lot less downsides in that regard. I don't want to say no downsides, because I'm going to get neat again, but it's like, less downsides for that, you know? So it's like, why do we kill off the differences between champions? Also, Gale Force, and you have the other item, Stridebreaker, like, it's like every everything feels so similar now that nothing feels that different anymore. And I think that's maybe the the thing that annoys me the most about pro, like all about the game right now. Even though I like to play it, it's still annoying about that because like champions don't feel like champions anymore. There's like this individual expression on the champion because every champion is the same, similar in that kind of sense. Or can we equalize through items or is equalized through game mechanics to a certain extent? I think even the strength between champs are similar, right? Like, if you look at top lane, they're strong all game, like, from the beginning of the game till the end of the game, pretty much. And same with mid and AD care, where in the past, it used to be top lanes were really strong early, and AD yes. cares were really strong late game, right? Yes. You have an AD carry get five items, you're like, yeah, I'm going to get free shot now. This yeah. is going to suck. Yeah, I mean, and you have, this, you have the same thing even across, like, not just, not just that, it's also, like, about champions that used to like have distinctive weaknesses and strengths they keep trying to equalize that too we see this slightly like with with some with some, sometimes more than others but it's like 
a lot of times right now are able to sustain against Jays, like in the top lane, for example. It's like sometimes if you're like really fucking good at the champion, maybe you can get like a lead, whatever it is. But due to like biscuits, due to like uh, whatever it's like the 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 Dorian the, Shield, the, Dorian Shield, then you have like the refillable portions. Like the difference between like playing Jace against a Maokai now between or back then is like way different. It's way different. Yeah. It's like it's not the same anymore.